are still paying tribute to, to this world evangelist known to be across the world of his impact of his ministry across the whole world. America is mourning a great legend who was called into eternity a few days ago. Dr. Billy Graham, whose sudden death at age 99 is become news across the continent. Evangelist Billy Graham, a confidant to the president and other presidents of America, he's also been known to be a guiding light to generations yet even unborn because his ministry is affected generations. On Wednesday, he died at age 99. A spokesman confirmed this. When yesterday, I remember, we broadcast all the details on this network, Great Television. Today, we'll be looking at some of his books that he's written that has gone viral and uh, the library that people is talking about, that particular library, because a lot of people have testified. They've actually given testimonies with regards to how that particular library of Billy Graham has affected their lives and has given them a life to live on. Some of the books that have been written by Billy Graham is, for example, Angels, God's Secret Agent. Another book also written by Billy Graham, which also became a bestseller, was a book um, with the title Nearing Home. So somebody was asking me, now talking about this particular book, does that mean that he knew that he would be going to heaven? And we know some people have speculated and we've had a couple, a couple of videos talking about the fact that Billy Graham is not going to go to heaven. But you and I can attest and testify of this man's good works. We will be looking at a short video with regards to his live documentary. Yesterday we looked at a couple of them. But today I would like us to look at one of the particular stories which is gone viral with regards to his short live documentary which my producer will be shooting it to us shortly for us to have a look at this particular man, the legend Billy Graham. Let's watch this video, a short documentary about his life. If we were to follow the footsteps of an ordinary man who had one day been dramatically changed by an extraordinary God, would we believe those steps would journey from the rolling fields of North Carolina to the steps of the White House and beyond? I just felt God was speaking to me, and he said, I want to use you. And I said, Lord, I'll go where you want me to go, and I'll be what you want me to be. I'm yours. Christ belongs to all people. He belongs to the whole world. His gospel is for everyone, whoever you are. He's one of the great evangelists of our nation's history. His crusades are legendary. The size of his crowds were magnificent throughout the years uh, because of uh, the message and because of the messenger. That's the beauty and the greatness and the thrill of God's love. The kind of person that a person in my position wants to know. While preaching to millions around the world, Billy Graham found himself being called upon many times as God's ambassador to world leaders. The ministry of Billy Graham as friend and counselor to U.S. presidents remains to this day unprecedented. In 1950, Billy was asked to visit the White House for the first time to meet with then-President Harry S. Truman. Soon after, every U.S. president since World War II found occasion and reason to call on the advice and friendship of Billy Graham. We need to pray for our president and for those in authority, as the scriptures have told us, he faces tremendous responsibilities. Lyndon Johnson wrote in a personal letter to Billy Graham, My mind went back to those lonely occasions at the White House when your friendship helped to sustain a president in an hour of trial. No one will ever know how you helped to lighten my load or how much warmth you brought into our house. But I know. The reason world leaders have sought his advice is precisely because he doesn't try to tell them what they should do tomorrow, but he does try to show them a way of thinking about the problem that adds a new dimension to their thinking. 
Throughout the world, governmental leaders have been asking the tough spiritual questions of Billy Graham, looking for answers. His ministry as an evangelist bringing the gospel of Jesus Christ has worked to shape the destiny of nations. At the end of these meetings with these communist officials, they would be sitting there in stone silence listening to every word that my father said. And when my father finished speaking, they would say, oh, but Dr. Graham, we have also wondered if there was a God. Talk to us more about how we can know God. So I think he was one of the forces that kept the window open to the human spirit during these oppressive years. Eight years ago, uh, one of the Lord's great ambassadors, the Reverend Billy Graham, went to Eastern Europe and the Soviet Union, and upon returning spoke of a movement there toward more religious freedom. And perhaps he saw it before many of us, because it takes a man of God to sense the early movement of the hand of God. And the same thing with these Chinese leaders that we saw in Russia. They would begin to ask my father spiritual questions. These are the kind of questions that were asked by top Chinese officials and Chinese leaders. Reverend William Billy Graham's untiring evangelism has spread the word of God to every corner of the globe and made him one of the most inspirational spiritual leaders of the 20th century. I think it's through him that I found myself praying even more than a daily basis to give me the wisdom to make decisions that would serve God and be pleasing to Him. Billy Graham, the man, the preacher, the humble farmer's son who helped change the world is a spiritual gift to all of us. Who is this unique person that comes across the pages of history? Who is this Jesus Christ? He's had many opportunities over the years to do other things that he turned down because God had called him to a higher calling and that was to be an ambassador of the Lord Jesus Christ and to take the gospel to literally the ends of the earth. All right, so you will come back from this short documentary about the life of this renowned evangelist, Dr. Billy Graham and I believe that you really are picking some inspiration from this great man of God whose sudden death is gone viral and I mean almost all the media houses across the continent in the US in the UK in Africa everybody's talking about this legend evangelist on great television and today we are looking at this legend evangelist Dr. Billy Graham We'll be looking at our next video if you just logged on your life on Genius in Brief with me, Jeremiah. And um, some of the Americans have benefited, not just the Americans alone, but some other people who also benefited from his library. This man had a library um, known as the Billy Graham Library. And a lot of people are talking about the fact that when they got that particular library, the ambience, the environment alone, if it gave them some assurance that there is a life that can be well lived. And um, not to talk about the, the way the place is well stacked with books that are quite relevant to the world. And so let's look at this particular video, how people actually now were sharing their testimonies about how good they, that library that this legend evangelist Billy Graham was a blessing to them as individuals and also as a corporate body. Let's watch this video. They come from all over, from all over the world, from every state, from every religion, the young and old, to learn more about North Carolina's favorite son, Billy Graham. Born in Charlotte in 1918, Billy Graham grew to become known worldwide as the most influential evangelical preacher of the 20th century. From 1947 to his retirement in 2005, the Billy Graham Crusades radio and television interviews reached over 251 million people in 185 countries. And every day, people come here to visit and learn more. Since 2007, this Billy Graham Library has had people from about 120 to 140 nations of the world grace these doors. 
from South Africa, Korea, Japan, Europe, Asia, Latin America. What an honor it is to host them. Of course, that's been the global parish of the Reverend Billy Graham. Amazingly, when you look at the Billy Graham Library, it's a barn. And children are very attracted to it. And inside, there's a talking cow. I know that seems odd, but there's a talking cow about te that tells about the life of the young Billy Graham who used to milk her. Children love it. So it really is carrying on the ministry of the Reverend Billy Graham. It is really a daily Billy Graham crusade. Visitors are greeted by volunteers like Wayne. And a self-guided tour of the journey of faith moves visitors through rooms depicting Billy Graham's life's work. Here we learn about his wife, Ruth, who grew up in China with her missionary parents and their early days as a family. You know, we have to have rules to live by. You will view early television interviews and recordings. Some visitors may remember the Hour of Decision radio show, which was broadcast from this booth in Black Mountain from 1950 to 2016. Rooms are filled with memorabilia from his work, his 419 crusades, and his travels. His world evangelism inspired others to continue his teachings, which are now translated into over 100 languages. Some countries were suffering from religious oppression, but Billy Graham's evangelical message reached millions nonetheless. I met a group of Russians and learned from Pavel Pozniakov that he was 18 years old at the Billy Graham Moscow Crusade in 1982. And he remembers the crowds of over 70,000 then clamoring to hear Billy Graham's message. Over the years, visitors and friends have included presidents, governors and celebrities. The Journey of Faith tour leads you to Rome Ruth's Attic Bookstore. Filled with over 4,000 books, Billy Graham sermons on DVDs and all kinds of gift items. Wayne, I've heard you've given over a thousand tours here at the Billy Graham Library. Can you tell us a little bit about the house? Yes, the, the house was built in 1927 when Billy was nine years old. It was built with $9,000 cash by his dairy farm father. And they had 300 acre dairy farm and they had 75 milk cows and Mr. Graham would milk 20 cows in the morning and 20 when he came home from school. And he lived here from the age of nine until the time he went off to college. We're actually walking to the foot of the cross. Mr. and Mrs. Graham always wanted to be buried at the foot of the cross and this pathway is actually a cross. And on my left is the tombstone that came out of the mountains of North Carolina, Ruth Bell Graham. Her little theme for her end of her life was, end of construction, thank you for your patience. She was born in China. The Chinese symbol above her name means righteousness. And on the right will be the place of coronation for Billy Graham beside his wife. Open and free to all. North Carolina's favorite son, Billy Graham is honored in this special place. The Billy Graham Library is at 4330 West Mont Drive in Charlotte and it's open Monday through Saturday from 9.30 a.m. to 5 p.m. Admission is free. To plan your visit, give them a call at 704-401-3200 or go to their website at billygrahamlibrary.org. Wow, such an amazing impact of this renowned evangelist and I believe that all of us are still drawing inspiration from such a great legend of the things of God. I'm just trying to just scroll through the number of books that he's written and it's amazing. This great legend is written more than I mean hundreds and thousands of books to my amazement. He's written books from peace to prayer to revival 
to to I mean encouragement, secret of happiness, lots of books that this gentleman, this man of God, had written and is actually been circulated across the whole world. And some even is been translated into other languages as well. This is such a man that we know that God actually gave to us on this particular earth and had an impact on us. Before we look at the final video, I also want to take this opportunity to say a happy birthday to another great man of God, an, insp an inspirer, um, a father to, to, to many as well, the Apostle General of Royal House Chapel International, the Reverend Sam Crunchy Ankara. Today happens to be his birthday. And on behalf of Great Television and their entire crew, we want to wish you a happy birthday, man of God. And we pray that just as Billy Graham is being celebrated across the continent and across the whole world, may you also be celebrated after your 100th birthday celebration where we all come in and pay homage to you. And so please, if you're watching and you are also a son or a daughter of Apostle General Samkranchi Ankara, and you want to wish him happy birthday, go onto our Facebook page, do us a favor, just send your message there and it will be read live on this network. Apostle General, on behalf of my senior pastor, Reverend Mrs. Nandi Yamano, and the general secretary, the entire pastor, uh, let's say pastoral board of the UK, we say happy birthday to you. Before we watch our final video of Evangelist Billy Graham, this actual video talks about some of the people who wanted to commit suicide, others also wanted to give up in life, and some people recommend a particular library for them, and then when they went in there, they shared their experience with the world as to how the library of Billy Graham indeed has been a blessing to them. As I said to you, this is a special edition of Genius in Brief, and in honor of this great man, this great legend evangelist, Billy Graham, and also today being the birthday of our spiritual father, Reverend Sam Crunchy Ankara, we wish him a happy birthday as well. Let's watch this video. We will come back again to the studio to have a recap of the headlines of today's genius and brief. We'll be right back. My wife's always talked about wanting to go to the Billy Graham Library. I walked in there, I was really tense. I really was frustrated and angry at God. My husband was living in Kentucky and I was living in Florida. We were separated. I was doubting the reasons for us to be a couple. We visited the library and we just felt at peace. None of you are here by accident. You are to meet God in a new way. I had heard about the Billy Graham Library and I figured this would be great to see what it's all about. One of the workers come up, he was admiring uh, my dog, and it, it made me kind of want to go a little further. I wanted to see uh, where is this going to end up. This library is not about Billy Graham, but it's about the message that Billy Graham has preached for the last 60 plus years. This building behind me is just a building. It's an instrument, it's a tool for the gospel. I want every person who comes to that library to know that God can change their life. He can forgive them and cleanse them and set them free of their guilt and shame if they're willing to bow their knee and surrender their life to Jesus Christ. I believed in God, but I didn't know a personal relationship was possible. I would use alcohol, I would use drugs. I had reached a bottom. I didn't know where else to go. As a military police officer, when I was in Iraq, I suffered a major head injury. There was an explosion. I had a rocket go through the building. The smiles all turned to uh, screams and gunfire. I see some of their faces on a daily basis and, and, you know, in my mind. Because of the injury that affects my motor skills and balancing skills. When I got home, the memories of what was going on in Iraq was consuming me to a point where I could no longer do my job. We have not 
So uh, as I began the tour, I was hearing things I had never heard before. We believe that there are many people here tonight that have hungry hearts. You can find everything that you've been searching for in Christ. The words pierced my heart. It became personal that day. I'm accepting this as your word by faith. When we were going through the galleries, there was a gallery that really spoke to us. A marriage must be, consist of three people, the man, the woman, and God. That right there, we looked at each other and we just uh, started crying right there. And we said, oh my goodness, he's talking to us about our relationship as a couple. As we went through each gallery, God continued to reveal to us that we needed to stay together. Jesus said our problems come from within. The basic problem is in your heart. You're away from God. You're the one lost sheep. And he's looking for you tonight. I left the room and I said, I'm hurt. I asked God that he would forgive me, take control of my life. After we got done praying, the dog came up to me and started licking my hands like he was trying to tell me, you're clean now. We came through the library. We were the last people out. Uh, we didn't want to leave. And then we came back the next day. This became our family, and they just embraced me in such a way, me and my husband. I accepted Christ on that day. To not have that emptiness inside and know that he knows me personally and I know him personally, that is absolutely what I had been searching for my entire life. Well, you welcome back to G News in brief today, Friday the 23rd of February 2018.